introduce my amendment. Okay, Senator Cassidy. Second. Yes, I will speak. Thank you. I approach this problem, Mr. <clears throat> Chairman, as a doctor representing patients, as a senator representing taxpayers. As a doctor, I know we need pharma to innovate. But I also know that if drugs are unaffordable, it is as if, it is as if the innovation never occurred. How do we control cost? Uh, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle support direct negotiation. I oppose that. The federal government would be both setting the rules and also the negotiator. I think that is unfair. It would give absolute power to the government, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Now, there's also the inflation cap. I reject that it is price setting. It merely limits subsidies. But for the sake of argument, let's ask, does Medicare set prices? Of course Medicare sets prices. Every doctor, every hospital tells you that the, that the uh, Medicare sets their price. What about drugs? This committee sets prices. 340B, which has tremendous support. Medicaid best price. That is setting prices. Section 103 of this bill tells biosimilars you're either getting that price or this price. To pretend we don't set prices is a pretense. Now, uh, what about the inflation cap's benefits? I would argue it does have benefits. Under the Medicare Part D, uh, uh, Medicare Part D protected categories, manufacturers have absolute power over pricing. Absolute power. Because we, the taxpayer, must pay for whatever they offer. <laughs> and just like absolute power corrupts the federal government, so absolute power corrupts that pricing. Latuta. This is an article from Secretary Azar and Seema Verma uh, on CMS.gov. Speaking of Latuta. Latuda's prices increased by 19% every year from 2013 to 2017. 19%. That's not innovation. That's shareholder benefit. That is taxpayers as a captive payer paying monopolistic pricing. That is not free market. Now, I'm a conservative who's for free markets. I reject monopolistic pricing exploiting a, ta a captive payer who is a taxpayer. So, as a doctor representing patients, as a senator representing taxpayers who firmly believes that we have to have a market which works, not a market in which the taxpayer and patient are exploited, I think we should unanimously support inflation caps. I yield back. Shall, no, no. Shall we vote? Please. Chairman, can I act quickly? Yes. Uh, CBO director, my colleague mentioned competition and the role of competition. In the protected classes, is there any, uh, what power does the purchaser have to drive down cost in the protected classes? Um, it's exactly as you said before. The, the protected classes remove the power of the, um, the insurer to drive down uh, prices. So there is no competition in the protected classes, no ability for the purchaser to drive those costs down. That's correct. And have we seen accelerated rates of inflation in those protected classes in which there, monop in which there is monopoly power and no ability to leverage those costs down? I, think if we I, I don't have the figures in front of me, but, but the broad answer is yes. Is that, and by the way, you're an economist, is that the definition of a free market? Doesn't sound like it, huh? Uh, it's, a, it's a complicated answer, but uh, there's, there's um, a lack of uh, power on the part of the insurers to, to hold down costs, as, as, as you put it. And then I will say that I think my colleague and I, though, have common ground. If he wished to have a secondary amendment, which would eliminate protected classes, I would support his bill. But the degree to which his bill feeds into protected classes, those sellers who have no competition and no ability for the purchaser, the taxpayer, or the patient to drive down the cost, therefore they can raise their uh, uh, cost 19% per year compounded. Um, that's not a free market. That is exploiting the taxpayer. So, so if he is willing to eliminate protected classes, I would be for his amendment. Mr. President. Uh, yeah. I, I will say that probably I may have been the first to start talking about this sort of IPIs on my website. I did the lower health care costs, but I will be supporting my, senator, uh, my fellow senator on this. I say this because the last rule, as I saw constructed, was self-referential. Was self it referenced countries that referenced us, which referenced 
which we reference back. So it's going to be a spiral downward as it's currently constructed. I also think that there's some other ideas that I think would be a little bit more effective at controlling that initial launch price. I'm interested in working with my colleagues on that. So I will support yeah, Senator get Kim. First. More discussion. Thank you. Now, Senator Cassidy. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I speak to Cassidy number five. Uh, it's about value-based pricing. We're trying to find ways to make new drugs more affordable, and this amendment would allow for a cost-neutral demonstration from CMS, allowing commercial value-based arrangements, exempting them from Medicaid best price requirements. And this is, I understand that it's the other side of the aisle that does not want this amendment. So I enter for the record a statement from John Gruber, so-called architect of the Affordable Care Act. Quote, we're about to enter an era of unprecedented treatment for rare disease at unprecedented prices to ensure access to all who need it. It is critical that we develop innovative new pricing models that spread payments and share risk between drug manufacturers and payers. This proposal is an important step forward in that direction. That was also a statement from Mark Trusham, a free market MIT economist. So with the commitment from the, president, from the chairman to work on ensuring we can pay for life-saving therapies in the future, I withdraw and move to Cassidy number one. Uh, right now, Medicare Part B payors don't have the same incentive to negotiate low prices because they're more fully reimbursed by Medicare. And these claims inflate the average sales price, or ASP. Cassidy number one will require manufacturers to rebate to Medicare the difference between their prices negotiated in Medicare and in the commercial market, giving taxpayer and patients full access to the prices achieved with tools used in the free market. I will also note this was brought to me constructively by a pharmaceutical CEO who felt like this would be an alternative to some of the other things we're speaking of. So I appreciate the chairman, including Cassidy number two on the mark to study this issue and respectively remove this amendment and go to my last, which is Cassidy number three, which I'm kind of scratching my head why it's not included. Um, this is a claims modifier from the OIG report. I've got two OIG reports, the one from 2016 found, said that we find, quote, we found that methods that operate on the claim level can improve accuracy in identifying 340B drug claims and therefore help states correctly collect rebates. But it also noted, while CMS agrees with the importance of claims levels message, the statute does not allow it. So it falls to Congress. OIG is saying that you're not supposed to take both 340B discount and Medicaid best price. 37% of the claims are taking both, both of these deductions. That is wrong. It's against the law. We need to help hospitals be legal. I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying it's confusing. This modifier would click whether or not it is 340B or whether it's Medicaid best price, but it would not double dip. Um, uh, and I can go further, but I think that's the bottom line. And again, I have two OIG reports suggesting it. So I guess I would say this very simple amendment takes a top recommendation from OIG to limit waste, fraud, and abuse by giving hospitals the tools they need to avoid inadvertent duplicate discounts. And I hope it can be reconsidered as we move to the floor. With that, I withdraw. I missed the point whether or not you wanted, were asking consent for something be included in the record. Um, yes, the, uh, that was on the previous one, a quote from okay. both uh, Jonathan Gruber and uh, Mark Trusham, two MIT economists. Without objection, it will be so ordered. Senator